Ray tracing sounds a bit like the name of some bloke who plays darts with your dad on a Sunday afternoon, but in case you're not aware, it is in fact one of the most powerful techniques when it comes to adding a dose of realism to your video games. It's long been something that only PC players could flaunt, showing off impressive rays of soft light and reflections while their graphics cards start to get warmer and warmer, and their system fans screech for a crumb of cool air. But in recent years, the technology has become more accessible and available to players, now arriving alongside the new generation of consoles, with some games tapping into the power of the Xbox Series X and S, as well as the PlayStation 5, to produce the jaw-dropping lights and shadows that were previously reserved for only the thickest of PC rigs. But how does ray tracing actually work? And be you a PC, Xbox, or PlayStation gamer, should you really care? Basically, ray tracing casts out and calculates linear rays of light between in-game light sources and the player's eye. This is rendered in real time as the rays bounce off whatever surfaces they hit, going from object to object and reacting accordingly until the image is displayed on screen. Ray tracing also calculates reactions from different surfaces like glass or water and how the light will reflect, refract and be absorbed differently. These calculations lead to a more accurate representation of how light works in the real world. Areas obstructed by objects or blocked from light rays are properly darkened as a result, which goes some way into creating more accurate shadows, and a scene's illumination looks more realistic. Scenes are able to represent changes to lighting conditions since rays are being cast and calculated in real time, making for realistic and dynamic environments. Traditionally, games have made more use of baked-in lighting and some extremely clever tricks of the trade to produce some convincing and realistic results, but these are often predetermined animations and renders that are much more static. This means that if you start messing with the objects within an environment and the light stays the same, the illumination that the game is providing starts to look out of place. Without ray tracing, if you interrupt a light source by moving an object or standing in front of the light, nothing really changes. With ray tracing, however, you can see your interactions and the changes in your environment in real time. Not every ray is calculated, however, because, well, that would be a gargantuan task. In the real world, approximately half a billion photons hit your eye every second to produce the image you're seeing now. With ray tracing, only the most important rays are being processed, and machine learning algorithms fill in the gaps between them through a process called denoising. Then programs use the player's viewpoint to work out what rays are actually being seen at any one point, and any potentially well-lit ray tracing goodness that could be happening outside of that point of view are ignored. Procedures like these go a ways to reducing the computing power needed when using this tech. Now this is obviously very impressive stuff, utilizing some extremely clever technology and going a long way in increasing graphic fidelity in our video games, but it doesn't come for free. Ray tracing can be a big drain on your system's GPU, especially at higher resolutions, so it often comes to a toss up of what you want out of your gaming experience. If you want these fancy shadows and real time lighting effects, your frame rate is going to suffer. How much is dependent on the game of course, but it's worth noting that in many cases opting in or out of this feature will provide a different gaming experience. Watch Dogs Legions can be run on the Xbox Series X with 4K and ray tracing enabled locked at 30 frames a second, but if you want to take advantage of a higher frame rate for a smoother experience, you'll have to disable ray tracing. Capcom says that ray tracing will be available with two of the Devil May Cry 5's gameplay modes on release, specifically a 4K and 30fps mode and 1080p at 60fps. If you want to play the game at 120 frames, however, you'll have to do so with no ray tracing. For your cinematic games that focus more on the world, environment and exploration, games like Control for example, the experience may be improved with ray tracing enabled. While we don't know how much the frame rate will be affected for multiplayer shooters like Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, however, it's often recommended to remain competitive in multiplayer. The higher the frame rate, the better. How these games and their ray tracing offerings hold up on our new home hardware, however, only time will tell. Nevertheless, all these compromises have also been the case for the PC player base too. But now, for the first time, the technology has made its way to consoles thanks to the power crammed into the Xbox Series X, Series S, and the PlayStation 5. Now it's more accessible than ever. And personally, I'm hoping that with that accessibility comes more developers willing to experiment with real purdy lighting and rad shadows. But what option are you going to run with? Will ray tracing be enabled at every opportunity? Or are you more focused on a triple digit frame rate? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you want to learn more about the hardware and tech inside your console, you can watch this video where John Luke breaks down whatever the heck a teraflop is. 
Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.